Hey, welcome back to Afro Sport Now in Focus. Now, let's take a quick look at Ghana's group at the African Cup of Nations qualifiers. And we know how that panned out. You can see them rock bottom in Group F. Three points. And uh, Kule, it's the first time in over 20 years that Ghana will not participate at the African Cup of Nations. So sad for Ghana because Ghana have been a beacon of uh, uh, football in Africa. In West Africa, at first, then in Africa. So sad that this multiple uh, African Nations Cup champion will be absent at the African Cup of Nations. And I also pray that they, be, they should be able to make it to the World Cup. What is happening in Ghana is just almost what is happening in Nigeria, where you have an erratic team so that so they, they need to rebuild it is uh, i mean it's unthinkable to say ghana will play six matches in the africa cup of nations qualifying without winning any at least they have three matches at home and they could not win and they lost not just to any team but to very lonely team and can, can you imagine ghana losing at home to the very public and even losing a penalty kick. So, and that's to tell you that this 2025 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier has some magic inbuilt in it, in the sense that this is one of the most, uh, uh, let me say, shock reading uh, African Cup of Nations qualifier. You can even see, even uh, Tunisia losing at home to a team like the Gambia. And you, you remember that at one point or two, they also lost at home to Comoros, which uh, is one of the, one of the big rated African uh, football team. So uh, and then you also look at other, in which uh, Nigeria losing 4 1 at home on its home soil. And then you also think of uh, other shock results. I think it's only, we can only talk of Morocco to be the only team that really needs to his pedigree, winning emphatically all their matches and mm. building a good rhythm towards the final competition. You have 13 months now to wait for the competition itself. That is enough time for teams that are qualified to rebuild, especially a team like Nigeria that is lacking in depth and also lacking in confidence. Mm. So we have 13 months now to build, to rebuild our national team to be at least uh, uh, to an applicable level that we can say, okay, when they go to tomorrow, 2025, the first edition of the African Nations Cup to be played in the month of December, mm. we should be able to make some impact. Now, there's been a lot of scrutiny towards uh, Otoado, the head coach of the Ghanaian football team, the Black Stars. And, uh, well, the players also have been under fire. But, you know, it's, it, it's a question that's begging to be answered. Who takes more of the blame? And what's the future, you know, with uh, Otto Ado as the head coach? Well, it, it depends on them. But I have a feeling that this is the beginning of the end for Otto Ado as the national team coach of uh, Ghana. Hmm. Quite interesting. Well, but, you know, the players also, perhaps uh, one could argue, they've not covered themselves in glory. I mean, six games and uh, you've not even managed one. And you look at the teams in that group, Angola, Sudan, these are teams that you think uh, will be winnable. But uh, it's not been the case. It's been the reverse of the case. So uh, who should take more of the stick? Or to do all the players? Well, it's unfortunate that in Africa, domestic coaches are never given any form of respect. So, and that may be the problem of Eduardo, even though he was, uh, I mean, he was in Germany, was doing well as an assistant coach. But the main problem is that when you come to Africa, I don't know whether it's still the, a carryover of the colonial mentality we don't seem to respect any one of our own. You can still recall the episode of uh, Victor Osime and, and, uh, and uh, Philippe Job. After the time uh, 
the senior was making that rant, he did the judge had not resigned. He was still a city coach. It just happened that it was later that same day that he resigned. Till now, the football federation had not seen it necessary to at least make uh, Victor Simo to say one or two words, no matter how keenly veiled the, the apology. But they just swept it into the carpet. And what goes round comes round. Go and mark it. We see, we are still going to have a bigger episode like that. We need the judge, uh, the saga. I remember an English, uh, an Indian coach who made just a comment that has nothing to do with the team, that has nothing to do with the personnel. He just made a statement about physically talented people worldwide, and that cost him his job. Yeah, because they said that is a very bad advertisement for the English national team. Well, so let alone when somebody else spoke well of not just the national team coach, but a legend of Nigerian football. I mean, uh, there are many things that uh, he had achieved that Victor Sime may never achieve. Well, we'll take it that controversy yeah, is yeah. controversy is part of you know the game as well. I really do have to let you go, Kunle. Thank you very much, Kunle Shulaja, Vice President, Editor-in-Chief yeah. of Extra Time Communications Limited. Thank you very much for your thoughts. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And that's the much we take here on Afro Sport Now in Focus. Thank you very much for following and watching. And you can be part of all we do on social media. The handle to follow on all platforms is at Afro Sport TV. Also, you can check our website for the latest news and information. It is AfroSportNow.com. My name is Ayo Mishabo. I'll see you next time.